Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching Ahsoka. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode 7 of Ahsoka, and I can't believe this show is almost over. I wish we had 18 episodes of it. It is so good, and it's so wonderful, and like there's been so many emotions with it. Um, and... I, I will say, like, not every episode gets to have Anakin Skywalker in it and have that powerful moment, but being reunited with Ezra, seeing Thrawn for the first time in live action, like, there were so many notable things, but, like, the world building, like, just being on Death Miri and having the mothers and, like, just the, the, the magic being introduced, and I missed what they were loading on the ship, of all the things in the show, I admit, I was like, what are they loading? Like, what is that? Like, what else is kept in a crypt? Like, what? The, the catacombs. What do you think are in catacombs, Angela? Dead bodies. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you for everyone who pointed that out to me. But, like, not only, like, were we introduced to this planet and that small section of the planet, which a lot was happening, but then when we expanded and we got the naughty... And we got, you know, of course, Ezra and the the Howlers. Like, there's just, like, so much that was so cool about that episode. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. I love when Star Wars is more than just what we know. But it, it's still what we know, but it, like, pushes outward. And that is so enjoyable. Dave Filoni is killing it. He always does. He always has. I just... I'm loving this series and I'm, I'm I'm happy that it's based off of my favorite character from Star Wars but I will say there was barely anything with her in the last episode but we did get Hu Yang kind of uh telling us about stories that he would tell the younglings at the temple and they started with the you know opening scroll and I I absolutely love that for us and I love that for David Tennant um but uh I I, I want to know if the stories are just stories or if they're based in truth um, you know, a lot of stories from long ago get kind of morphed into something else as we go. So, you know, that could be the case. But whatever it is, you know, Balin called Death Mary a graveyard or Peridia a graveyard. Um, and I, I don't... A graveyard where there are dead bodies that um, are being put on a ship that will probably be risen, <laughs> that, that will be reanimated, uh, I, I feel... That's scary. I don't know if they'll make it or not. That would be very interesting to see where uh, where that takes us. If if we ever leave this galaxy or not. See, that's, that's kind of the only way I can think of that it could possibly end is like all of these people stay in this galaxy. Um, and then like new Star Wars lore starts. Fine by me. But we did not get Sabine telling Ezra anything about how she got there why she's there. She did kind of say that, like, he was successful at saving the fall, um, but she didn't want to talk about it. She just wanted to be happy. I get that, and I understand that, but I also hate that, because I'm like, girl, you need to tell him right away. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what we can do, but we have to be able to stop Thrawn from leaving this planet, leaving this galaxy, and, and like, step on it. Like, let's go. Um, so we have that that we're going to have to worry about and, and his reaction to it. I don't perceive him being mad. And every time I have a guess as to how somebody's going to react to something, I'm always wrong. Maybe he'll be livid. Maybe he'll be understanding. Maybe he'll be a mix of both. I'm not sure. We know that Ahsoka is on her way to Peridia and uh, that the, the Night Sisters didn't know about this thread and that Thrawn wants to know as much about her as possible. Now, definitely learning that she was trained by Anakin Skywalker, who became Darth Vader. I'm sure Thrawn knew that. Um, so I feel like he could really manipulate her, but also with the Night Sisters magic, I don't know if we're going to get more Anakin because I feel like that would be a way to mind F Ahsoka is to bring him back, but in a more disturbing way. <sighs> Yikes. So to guess where the story is going to go, I have no idea. I love that it's all new territory where it feels familiar, but it's all brand new at the same time because we have like the players we know and love, but the the location and what awaits us, I have no idea. And I really want more Enoch because I want more Wes. And if we could see that beautiful face, that'd be wonderful, unless it's uh, a reanimated guy that's underneath up there if it's like a morok situation where it's like 
then I wouldn't be too happy about it. But if I can see Wes Chatham's beautiful face, make my heart skip a beat. <laughs> and, it, and, and it's a little uncomfortable to say this because I feel like I've known Ezra since he's been a kid because he was like a little animated boy and then he was a teenager. But uh, this Ezra is so hot. Uh, I'm I'm not upset. Not upset. A lot of people said that he's the Star Wars Moses. I see it. I see it. Yeah, he's beautiful. Good job. <laughs> Got those Bridger jeans. He looks great. And he sounded like him too. And he his mannerisms and everything felt like Ezra. So I'm I'm super excited to get more of him and the conversation and what he's been doing all this time on this planet. And like, has he been on the run? Because it, it's it seems like they have to like get up and move. And I don't know if that is from the people that are on the planet that Sabine had run into. Uh, the Raiders, I guess, um, or if it is Thrawn's people, or if it's both, if, like who they've been dodging, where they've been going, what they've been doing. So uh, we got to catch up with Ahsoka, see what Ezra's been up to. Did Sabine tell him? What's Thrawn's plan? What What is Balin doing? Like he is like out there searching for this mystery power that it seems like maybe even the witches are scared of. So Balin is such a mystery, and uh, I love him and Shin together and the conversations they have together where she challenges him, but not in a bratty way. Um, like, they're just like a really good team up. And and a lot of people are like, like, well, aren't you don't. Why is no one commenting about Shin having doubt? And I was like, I don't see her having doubt, but I do see her asking questions because the thing that she knows isn't really what it is. Like, she she needs more knowledge. And uh, I, I, I love how he seems like a very capable teacher. Um, and I'm, of course, I have a crush on Balin as well. Just, <laughs> he has a beard. Ezra has a beard. They're all just beautiful men. Uh, so i got to catch up with Balin. <laughs> I think I tell on myself sometimes. Uh, but then also, I don't know if we're going to get any more of Hera and what's going on with the, the New Republic because they are... They're the New Republic. They're garbage. But uh, as long as Carson is okay and Hera is okay and Jason's okay and Chopper is, you know, behaving himself accordingly until we need him not to, uh, cool. But I would like a catch up on that as well. <laughs> and more Mon Mothma. Why not? Okay, guys, I am super excited to get into this episode. I have no idea what this will hold. And I love that. Okay, guys, let's get into it. This music is fantastic. Main character energy. Okay. Coruscant it is. My job is to protect the people of this Republic. I see. And you protected the New Republic by ignoring direct orders. No, this I guy. protected the New Republic by ignoring you. <laughs> My mom was smiling to herself. I see a general who abuses her authority for personal gain. And I will not stand for it. What personal gain? Identification. I am C three PR. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. But why are you here? Senator Organa. I am here on behalf of Senator Leia Organa. May I speak? Thank you. <laughs> oh, 3PO, I've never been so happy to see you. This is preposterous. The court cannot admit evidence of this kind from a mere droid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. well, Get him, Chopper. Organa is willing to overlook this misstep, but asks that you address any further concerns to her directly in her role as leader of the Defense Council. Boss ass bitch. Well, that seems to settle the matter. It certainly does. Senator Sienna? No, Madam Chancellor. <laughs> Court dismissed. I love it. How real is the threat of Thrawn's return? Very real. We have to prepare for the worst. And hope for the best. 
Oh, it gave me a cold chill. Oh my god, it's the 3PO showing up here. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Not me. <laughs> Dreams and Madness. Great title. Can't wait. Oh yes. Unexpected, but I'm not mad. General Grievous, Asajj Ventress, even Count Dooku. You can face any one of them on the battlefield. So practice these forms often, or at least more than I do. <laughs> I know you can do this, Ahsoka. He made 20 or more of these recordings. This was his last one. I want to see all 20. I would point out that you are assuming the Star Whales have brought us to the correct galaxy, let alone the same system or even the same planet where Lady Ren was taken. True. I think the odds are pretty good. No. No, in fact, they're terrible. <laughs> terrible. Well, you should have said something. I did, but you never... <laughs> I love this relationship. This is it. We are exiting hyperspace now. Oh, I'm so nervous. So cool. Okay, no one's being shot at. I'm picking up a lot of interference. Something's wrong. Oh no. Oh, such a cool shot. Oh, they had mines! Irritatingly smart. Oh. At least the whales are providing some cover. Oh. You had to say something. I was being well, they optimistic. Didn't do it because he said it, but. <laughs> well, we found the enemy. <laughs> I'm so happy it wasn't just a bunch of whales getting blown apart in space. That would have just broke my heart. Oh. There is nothing on the scope. And by me. <laughs> it would seem as a good time I was alive and well after all. Here's everything the Inquisitorial database had on her. Hmm. I hope it's like next to nothing. Oh. The master was General Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, she's dangerous. And if she's anything like her master, she'll be unpredictable and quite dangerous. Which is why we must control all variables. Put her on a path of her own choosing, so that no matter which direction she takes, We'll always be one step ahead of her. Yeah, he's really good at figuring that stuff out. He plays the long game. Okay. Have we been chatting with Ezra? Hmm. I thought they were little houses. I mean, they are, but like they're also little floaty transports. I like it. <laughs> I really thought about how much I've missed. I'm still trying to process everything you told me. The Empire was defeated. Battle of Endor. How did you? What? Find me. You never said. It's complicated. Oh boy. Well, we could talk about something else, I guess. No! So infuriating. God, I wish you would just say what went down. Like, you can't keep it in forever. Nothing. I cannot locate Lady Ren. Shall I try again? No. We don't need a scan. You gonna reach out? There's another way. Do you think your bond is that strong? We'll find out. Sabine. Ahsoka. 
You know where she is? Can you get there? I see her. Oh no! Oh no! The Jedi is there. They found us! Don't worry, I know where we're going. Wonderful, so on our way! <laughs> So not direct coordinates, just a general area. <laughs> like, how, well, how are they still shooting at her? Can they see her now? Your ambition drives you in one direction. My path lies in another. One parting lesson, Shin. Impatience for victory will guarantee defeat. Yep. So it's goodbye, huh? Or maybe just goodbye for now? Oh. I don't want any of the naughty to get destroyed. Oh! <laughs> I don't want anything to happen to them. Oh! Good job. <laughs> They're resourceful. I like it. Get inside. I'll handle this. Yeah, everyone, get covered. I love their little pods. I love them so much. Who's that? She's like you, but lacks your sense of humor. <laughs> Lightsaber? Oh, yeah. Like, shouldn't she give, like, Ezra her lightsaber? His lightsaber? Won't need to land. Oh, not this again. <laughs> yes, this again. Once I'm on the ground, <laughs> oh. I'll fire his way. Yes, yes. Always on the outside of the ship she is. Time. You got the timing wrong? And didn't I feel terrible? No! <laughs> Nice. Okay, okay. Awesome. Uh-huh. Well, this is a surprise. As much as I love both watching both of them fight, I don't want to see this. got a whole different mindset this time, I think. What's the plan? Here. Do your thing. What thing? It's your lightsaber. Take it. You keep it. What? I don't what? need it. Besides, you've been training. No, I'm serious. Take it. I gave it to you. It's yours now. At least take a blast. What is... What's going on? No. The Force is my ally. That's all I need. Okay. Okay. I trust you. Force pushing, force kicking, I love it. She's been training with Anakin, so I believe that she's gonna... I, I, I mean, obviously she's gonna win, but I don't, I don't think she'd kill Balin. Good to have you back, buddy. Behind you. Oh, close. A little too close for my liking. Oh, it's not looking good for you. Take her now. <sighs> Can't defeat me. Perhaps. I don't have to. <laughs> I'm never mad when I get to see a lightsaber fight, but I'm happy no one died. <laughs> I genuinely love all these characters. I don't want anyone to die. We have them. Our side is short one mercenary. Where's Balan's gone? 
Off finding whatever it is that he wants to find that means so much to him. Ooh. Nice team up. Destroy them. Wait, wait, wait. We could talk. I'm, or we could just It's very Ezra. Don't of him. you want to take us as prisoners? Huh? Or Fire! Uh... <laughs> oh man. I'm like twisting my fingers. I hope you do too. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, one might even call this first match with Tano a success. I see only our enemies reunited. Let me show you what yeah. I see. Yeah, spill. With our enemy distracted, the cargo transfer is now almost complete, which means we shall soon leave this forsaken place. Long game. Yeah, they're abandoning you. I can help you. Glad they didn't kill her. I thought you were dead. I missed this reunion. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was dead. Clearly I was wrong. Yeah, get on board and go. I don't know where. I don't know what they're gonna do. Go to throne ship. I absolutely love these people. Guys, getting a feeling. I think I might be going home after all. Please don't end here. <sighs> ah! I could just listen to this theme like over and over. It's so beautiful. The Anthony Daniels. <laughs> Okay, so I'm happy about the reunion with Ahsoka and Ezra, obviously, like, it's very heartwarming. Um, the Ahsoka reaching out through the Force and talking to Sabine and them still having that connection is wonderful because they seem very disconnected the entire time. It did not feel like a master-apprentice relationship. It felt like a contentious friendship or like, you know, just, just acquaintances that tolerate each other. And this is the first time that it really felt like that there was a connection there. Um, but it was so nice to see Ezra just using the force to fight. Like, I don't know why he was so like, no, it, it, I don't, I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't, I feel like it would be like another like reunion for him to like hold his lightsaber and fight with his lightsaber again. But I'm kind of glad that he doesn't need it. And he was very sure of himself. I love that for him. Now, definitely um, getting Shin and fighting and, and getting both of them fighting against her. Um, I, I, I This is the first time that, like, I felt like there was a disconnect between Shin and Balin, um, where, you know, he's just like, you know, if you are, you know, um, in such a rush, essentially, I'm going to sum this one up, not necessarily how he said it, but he's just like, when you're, and you're in a rush for victory, you will always fail. And... You know, she really seemed to like linger her, her eyes on him for quite some time. And it's kind of the same thing that Obi-Wan was trying to teach Anakin back in the day. It was just like, you need to have patience. If you're always rushing for victory, you know, you're going to be defeated every time. And he, we saw that when they were sparring. I love how you can take things from different 
shows and you can incorporate them and they still completely make sense. It's not just regurgitating something to regurgitate it. It actually means something in these moments. Now, Balin seemed like he was like ready to let go of her to like just let Shin go off. And he's like, before we part, instead of like, hey, you know, go do your job and then we'll meet up. Like, it didn't seem like that. It was like, this is where we leave it. And that makes me kind of sad for Shin um, because I feel like she still needs a master. She still needs like discipline. Um, and, you know, Ahsoka, like, you know, extending her hand saying that she can help her. I don't I don't know if she's gotten that from anybody other than Balin. Um, but Balin kind of having that lingering look where he's like watching Ahsoka, like, you know, drive right off, drive off, right off and going towards Shin, Sabine and Ezra. And he like, you know, looks off this way and then he like looks up and then he looks off again. And like, I don't know if there was like a turmoil there of him, like saying, like, I should go help. I don't know if he feels like drawn like to them because of the force. But whatever he's doing or wherever he's going, whatever he's seeking, I think that might be the key to help them get home. Um, because there's like this power that, you know, the mothers are afraid of and and it, it seems like that they can't wait to get off this planet. And I I don't know if it's just that it's a horrible place to live. I mean, the the Nodi seem to be, you know, <laughs> thriving. <laughs> I love them, by the way. They just are delightful and they make me smile. And whenever there's something heavy, they always have like that little moment of levity. And I really appreciate that. But whatever Balin is searching for, I believe, like could possibly help them get home. Now we have Thrawn saying, you know, all of this distraction that we have had has led for us to be able to, you know, finish loading the ship and that, you know, Ahsoka is essentially out of time. Um, with the, the next episode coming up being the finale of this season, I don't know where it's really going to leave us. If we're going to like actually leave this galaxy, if we're going to be able to stop Thrawn. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad that nobody has died. Um, like that, you know, you don't see Ahsoka killing Balin or Shin killing Sabine or like anything like that. Like there's like always like fights and there's 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 these moments where it's just like you see Ahsoka fighting Balin this time around and she doesn't have that anger, you know, and, and that she has changed that way. And, you know, she wasn't trying to win. She was just trying to buy time for Hu Yang to come back and, you know, <laughs> distract Balin so she could go and find Sabine and Ezra. So I'm I'm like really glad that like they're they're not like actually attempting to kill each other because I feel like if they really wanted to, they could. I don't know. I don't know. Besides Shin saying, like, fire, but, like, I don't know how effective that would have been with stormtroopers anyway, so that's the only thing that really makes me feel better about it, is that they all could have been at point-blank range and missed. <laughs> now, the fact that, like, Sabine still has not told Ezra about Thrawn or about like how she got there and the whole scenario is so irritating story-wise and I love Dave Filoni and I love the way he writes characters and I love the way he writes a series but there are just certain like tropes that we fall into of like the main character delaying telling somebody something because like she fears that the truth is going to upset them or ruin the peace that she is currently you know enjoying and the thing is <laughs> delaying the inevitable means that you have a shorter time span to come up with a plan <clears throat> um and i get it storytelling wise they have to delay it until the last episode why that is i don't know yet but uh it's it's really irritating but I, I am glad that he knows about the the rebellion and the Battle of Endor, about Hera and what she's doing, about Zeb and what he's doing. I think uh, I think like just it's it's nice to know that he knows that his friends are doing well, um, that his actions have led to them having better lives. Now speaking of Hera, oh my God! Okay, so. I'm always happy when we got Mon Mothma. Um, ever since Andor, I just absolutely love Genevieve. I love her portrayal of her, and she's just always awesome. Now, Hera was equally awesome. She's very, um, I don't even want to say stubborn. She delivers things in a way that is not emotional, but like very point blank to the point, like not messing around. Um, Carson coming to her, you know, aid in the back there and just like, you know, mentioning 
Uh, Moff Gideon, and that's where worlds collide. I'm very happy to uh, hear that. But I did not expect C-3PO. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Anthony Daniels? It's delightful because I'm sure if Carrie Fisher were still alive, they would have had her, you know, well, I don't know. Age-wise, I don't think it really would have matched up with this story where it currently is. But, like, maybe even just, like, a, a hologram or something would have been uh, amazing. I... I did not expect C-3PO, and I love how it's just like, oh, we're going to take the word of just a droid, and you see, like, Chopper, like, ready to blow. <laughs> I love that Carson's like, like, calm down, buddy, calm down. <laughs> I enjoy it thoroughly. Oh, And then, of course, Hayden, and still teaching Ahsoka, and I'm sure she's watched that dozens upon hundreds, maybe even thousands of times, and still taking direction from him and you know when she said she had 20 other ones i was like let's watch them all right now um i would love to see those i love these training videos i love you know him still encouraging her and and him still being very much a part of her training very much part of her life and that's i mean he always will be but i think now that she has like that levity of kind of having that moment in the world between worlds that like maybe there's not a deep pain that sits there anymore and so when she's watching these she's kind of remembering her old master and just like how knowledgeable he was and what a good master he was and she even said he was a great master and he was he still is apparently <laughs> It's so wonderful to get these little moments and it's not over the top and it's not too much and it feels like it fits. And I think that that's the thing is like you don't put things in like nostalgia wise for just nostalgia's sake, but you put it in because it's meaningful and it means something, you know, uh, having C-3PO deliver the news and having Hayden still in here as Anakin teaching Ahsoka. It's just wonderful. Now Thrawn. Thrawn is... Of course, as scary as I thought he would be, he's just so calm, cool, and collected. And the only time you've ever seen him really have a moment of pause is when he reads that Ahsoka's master was Anakin Skywalker, because he knows. He, he knows who Anakin is, but he knows who Anakin became. And uh, I th he definitely knows that she is dangerous, that she is powerful. And I agree. And like that's the time where he's just like, oh, well... <laughs> New plan <laughs> with less emotion, uh, but definitely, you know, he plays the long game. So he's so good at strategy and coming up with these ways of like moving three or four steps ahead and kind of just seeing things for the bigger picture and not just being focused on the here and now. And that's like one thing that's always made him dangerous. And 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 not only that, but his demeanor. And now that we have the introduction of of the mothers and, and this magic, you know, I, I like I said, like they're they they weren't used at like a for a big thing other than to find Ahsoka, but it was like when she's looking for Sabine is when they were able to lock in on her. And I don't know what the grand scheme of like what their magic is capable of. And I feel like the last episode we might actually see that. Which might be scary, terrifying, and wonderful. <laughs> I can't wait. But guys, if you want to watch the full-length reaction to this episode, it will be available on my Patreon and uh, other Star Wars content is available on my YouTube. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. One, how'd you feel about this episode? Because I'll tell you, lightsaber duels are amazing. I, I like when we get Balin and Ahsoka fighting each other because it, generally, it, it, it looks like two people who know they have to fight each other but kind of don't want to. Or like, I don't even know if it's don't want to. I think they appreciate the strength that each other has. I think that's kind of more of where I should go with that. Um, Shin, I think, is... I, I hope she doesn't feel abandoned. She easily could. And I would say swoop in and pick her up. That is a player you want on your team. Um, yeah, she's got a little bit of a tude sometimes towards Sabine. But other than that, she is fierce. I really like Shin. I really like her a lot. But what do we think the next move is? Is it destroying the Chimera and nobody leaves? Is it finding Balin and seeing what this other power is that he was talking about, that he's seeking? 
I'm 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 curious. I'm so happy no whales were killed. Oh my gosh. I literally thought like we were just gonna see like like whale tentacles like all over the oh I I was I was really scared for them when when I saw it was a minefield and they were just kind of like taking the hits and then they like flew off. I was like, okay, that worked out great. <laughs> I'll take it. I like literally thought like they were all migrating there to die. So like maybe it wouldn't have mattered, but like I, I don't know if they were necessarily ready to die. So I'm equally happy that one, they left. They didn't migrate there to, you know, be at their final resting place and they weren't destroyed and obliterated in space. So that makes me very happy. But where do we go? What do we do? Mm, so many questions. But guys, I am looking forward to the next episode, to the last episode, but I'm also dreading it because then that means it's come to an end and then we don't have more for a while. And this was such a fantastic show. This is a fantastic show. We are so lucky to get this every week. I can't rave about it enough. And like, I'm very critical of things. And like, I tell you, like the writing for Sabine and her like delaying telling Ezra anything drives me crazy. Um, and, and I, I feel like some things are a little drawn out and slow. And I know maybe they want that to like, kind of create this kind of like anxiety, which it's working. I feel anxious sometimes when I'm watching it, but, uh, you know, other than that, like, like there's just, there's too many wonderful things to like focus on, like some of the little things that like, eh, big deal in the grand scheme of things, like a year from now, I probably won't even care about those things. I'll just be so happy that this exists. So guys catch me here next week for the finale. And in the meantime, may the force be with you.